Hi, I'm Neil Smotrisk, the president of the University of North Texas, and today is our first ever virtual State of the University. I want to thank you all for taking the time to hear about our progress and how this pandemic has changed how we do business. You all know it's been a long and challenging year, and in the face of the current pandemic, I wanted to take a moment to recognize your hard work by looking at a few of our achievements. We had a lot to celebrate last year, and we made real progress implementing our strategic plans, as highlighted in this video. A beacon of light shining bright in the North Texas sky, UNT's McConnell Tower always brings a smile. Whether it's warm glow signals, a mean green win on the field, or honors new graduates. For 130 years, UNT has been a guiding light for students. Those students have big dreams, but big dreams often come with big challenges. Our 4,000 faculty and staff members know the road ahead, and no challenge, not even a global pandemic, can stand in the way of their purpose. The first hurdle many students face is often financial, and this past year was certainly more difficult than most. After increasing our excellent scholarships to award a record $411 million in financial aid and scholarships, UNT recorded a record high enrollment in fall 2019. We reorganized our student retention efforts and expanded our programs by piloting the Navigate Student Success Platform, developing a new first-year experience program, and partnering with Raise Me to reward students who engage in social and academic best practices. Our tremendous support system makes it easier for UNT students to focus on those big dreams, and as a result, UNT students are gaining national attention. Our award-winning one o'clock lab band performed by special invitation at the Lincoln Center in January. And while there are decades of Grammy Awards celebrating the music in our soul, we have a healthy helping of science and technology to balance us out. A UNT student once again claimed the top spot in IBM's prestigious Master of the Mainframe competition, while another student earned funding from the U.S. Department of Defense to discover new ways protect soldiers in the field through drone research. At a national competition, our communication design students won 16 awards, 61% of the prize money and the title of best school. And our eSports team ranked in the top eight in the U.S. We love seeing our students learn, create, and shine on the national stage. But one of our favorite shining moments is when our students achieve their goals and UNT can celebrate awarding a record-setting 10,000 degrees this last year. Our number of academic programs ranked in the nation's top 100 increased to 89, 20 of which were ranked by U.S. News & World Report. Our commitment to research continues to flourish. We introduced a new focus on interdisciplinary research in urban water futures, applied artificial intelligence, and integrated intelligent mobility systems. Licenses and disclosures for research soared to 42 with faculty filing disclosures of new inventions and intellectual property. Among our new faculty are two National Academy of Engineering members and four winners of the National Science Foundation prestigious Career Award. The newly established DC Faculty Fellows Program sent 19 junior faculty to the nation's capital to meet with funding organizations to boost opportunities for grant funding. As a result, UNT had an increase of 14% in grants submissions. Hearing our students ask for more 21st century degree plans led to six new degrees in fast-growing fields like business analytics, data science, and urban policy and planning, as well as a partnership with the Dallas Cowboys for an MBA in sport entertainment management. We unveiled the nation's first bachelor's degree from a U.S. university on Coursera, the world's leading online learning platform. This means our ever popular degree completion program, our Bachelor of Applied Arts and Science, is now available to anyone, anywhere. This last year, we also saw the culmination of a multi-year construction boom on campus. We officially opened Joe Green Hall, the Welcome Center, and Biomedical Wing at Discovery Park. The Center for Agile and Additive Adaptive Manufacturing also opened its doors to the public 
amid much fanfare and a $10 million funding boost from the state of Texas. Our student athletes gained a temperature controlled environment for practices, providing welcome relief from Texas weather with the completion of the Lovelace and Magnat Families Practice Facility. Challenges are rarely simple, and 2020 hit all of us with a big one. COVID-19, the greatest challenge to modern higher education, has tested every shred of adaptability, creativity, and resilience in our core. But stars shine brightest in the darkest of skies, and we adapted swiftly, moving 7,700 courses online training 1,400 faculty on best practices for remote instruction, and virtually delivering crucial student services like advising, counseling, financial aid, and academic resources. While stay-at-home orders were in place, essential personnel kept our campus safe and well-maintained, often taking on additional duties to aid colleagues. Five advisory groups focused on academic affairs, operations and physical plant, research, safety and incident management, and student life were critical to developing UNT's multi-tiered return to learn plan. Because of our dedicated faculty and staff, our students are persisting at even higher rates toward their goals through the wildest of storms. We know that during the time of COVID, our students were hit hard financially, but we stepped up to help as much as we could Nearly 14,000 awards, totaling just under $12 million, were given to students out of UNT's CARES Act allotment and generous donations to the UNT CARES campaign. Mentorship and engagement opportunities were created for freshmen exclusively enrolled in online classes for those in isolation. A global pandemic may have changed how we look on the surface, but it's further entrenched who we are on the inside revealing a community at the height of its most valued character traits and exemplifying the creativity, caring, and resilience we hold dear. As if a global pandemic wasn't enough of a challenge, our country is struggling with how to address decades of social injustice, systemic racism, and trauma. This led to opportunities for our country to grow and progress as we've seen important movements like Black Lives Matter come to the forefront. Here at UNT, we have worked to make major strides in addressing equity and inclusion across our campus for our diverse populations. This past year, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of our Equity and Diversity Conference, featuring Bakari Sellers as the keynote speaker and the 25th anniversary of our Multicultural Center. We also had vital conversations about UNT's cultural climate and our need to improve diversity and inclusion efforts across the board. This was especially important as our university was recognized as one of only 16 tier one Hispanic serving institutions in the nation this year, as well as a minority serving institution. Listening to our students' thoughts and experiences, we developed a five-year strategic plan, including action steps to improve the environment through ongoing trainings, hiring a more diverse workforce, and launching our Center for Racial and Ethnic Equity in Health and Society. We heard our community cry out for help. We know the time for change is now. The tower is lit. It's time to lead the way forward. What a wonderful year it was. Hiring National Academy members, increasing the number of programs in the top 100, expanding our enrollment and offering more financial aid and scholarship support, implementing new retention programs, rapidly expanding corporate partnerships, major commitments to become a more diverse and equitable campus, increased research submissions, achieving HSI status, and graduating a record number of students. No wonder we've been called one of the top 10 public universities on the rise in the nation. And we made big moves in the U.S. News and World Report rankings, moving from 140 to 121 for public institutions this year, leapfrogging many of our competitors. It's no accident that we've done so well, despite the challenges and uncertainties of the COVID pandemic. We're moving ahead as an institution, 
because of our commitment to our values of creativity, caring, and resilience. If you go over our past State of the University presentations and planning workshops, you can see that our planning efforts are coming together. In past years, we worked diligently to implement our plans, and as a result, you can see that progress. We achieved financial stability so that we could invest in our strategic plans and our student success early in my tenure here. We made major commitments to becoming Tier 1 by expanding our research success and significantly expanding PhD funding to support our research and graduate more PhDs. And that's moved us up in the Carnegie rankings. We hired a new VP for digital strategy and grew our online efforts dramatically to give our students more options for getting their education, like our first in the country launch of our Coursera partnership to provide fully online BAAS completion degrees at scale. And that's garnered international attention. Just this past year, we produced 169 new high-quality, fully online classes. And as the need for going remote and demand has skyrocketed, these classes have served us well. We're making it easy for our corporate partners and employees to get degrees by providing custom-built and innovative online degree programs and collaborating with companies like Google, Cinemark, J.P. Morgan Chase, the Dallas Cowboys, and many others. And in the past few years, we've consistently focused our planning efforts on student success through new initiatives, like intensifying our retention efforts for all of our students through better data tools and launching predictive analytics. We're helping our students and faculty to develop growth mindsets in the classroom through new initiatives like Raise Me, UNT to You, Nest, and our first year student experience programs. We've added more advisors to help our students make better progress and expanded student support services like tutoring and access to services in Sage Hall. And we've added programs like Start Green, Stay Green to help students quickly find critical services and financial support to help limit their debt. As we look at the changing population demographics in Texas, by limiting tuition increases, we made UNT a more accessible university. And we're creating opportunity for our diverse populations to transform their lives by realizing the dream of a college education. We intensified our minority recruiting efforts by helping over 3,000 black and Hispanic students from underrepresented areas with the UNT admissions process and by translating key enrollment web pages and resources into Spanish to better serve Latinx parents and their students. We have steadily worked on implementing our plans and each of these is a piece of the puzzle that's building our future. Our plans have also prepared us well for the challenges we are facing during this COVID pandemic. I need to thank you all for coming together and collaborating to help bring those plans to fruition. Affordability, our changing demographics, the need for Texas to graduate the next generation of leaders to help guide our economy in the future. All of this means we have to change the way we do business to better meet the needs of our students. We also have the challenges brought about by COVID, uncertain enrollment, the financial pressures our students face, and the demographic cliff that we see threatening schools across the nation. Fortunately, we have steadily charted a course over the past few years to become an institution known for educational innovation. And that innovation and hard work is key to our success during this difficult time. In short, we've shown that we can offer tier one excellence while expanding access and affordability for our increasingly diverse population. This year, facing these uncertain times, it's going to be hard to meet some of our goals. But if anything, the pandemic has accelerated our plans to become a next generation institution due to the many COVID heroes who've made this such a successful fall launch. This video celebrates your caring and resilient spirit and the many quiet acts of heroism that have shown your support for our students during this challenging time. Who of us thought we would be wearing masks? You know, who of us thought that uh, we would ever say social distancing as many times a day as we do? When the campus closed, we continued to identify ways to provide uh, resources to our faculty and to ensure our students were successful. Um, our frontline workers kept the building open 
uh, managed regular operating hours so our students had access to materials and computers and Wi-Fi. Our facilities and systems department checked out hundreds of laptops and Wi-Fi hotspots for students who either didn't own a computer or have access to reliable internet at home. We needed a central location for uh, both the ex faculty and students to go find that information so we developed uh, the Teach Anywhere and Learn Anywhere websites. And as information started coming in, it was update after update. Um, actually, about every 15 minutes would be a change. I was kind of struggling with figuring out how, how I was going to manage all of this new homework and all of these classes going online when I was so used to having that in-person support. I'm very much the type of person where an in-person lecture is how I learn best. And the pass-fail system kind of not necessarily gave me an out, but gave me an option to escape, for lack of better words, um, on the days where I felt like I couldn't get out of bed and I needed to focus on my mental health, it gave me the option to do so. Um, I was able to spend less time worrying about what are my grades gonna look like and more time worrying about am I retaining the information. We have to remember that online courses are not always the first choice for all students. Uh, with the sudden pivot to a virtual learning environment, there's many things that I had to do as an instructor, including making sure that the engagement was going to be there. We weren't sure the solutions that we were proposing our faculty would be comfortable or not. Uh, we were blessed with the awesome faculty. Each one of them have pushed beyond their boundaries, their comfort zone in terms of technology, uh, to go to that extra mile for our students. Prior to the pandemic, we provided live proctored secure online testing in the Sage Hall Computer-Based Testing Center that couldn't happen during the pandemic. So we had to pivot to providing the same sort of services uh, via online technology. So I expected the transition online from in-person to online to be really challenging, but uh, Dr. Clayton and my other professors in, in spring semester of this year, they made it seem as if it was super easy. They made themselves very available to us, day and night even. In the fashion design program, uh, the traditional experience at the end of the semester for seniors is the fabulous fashion runway show. And um, because of various constraints, we had already internally been preparing for alternative modes of presentation. The students had concerns and we wanted to be able to actively respond to their concerns. They also wanted to be sure that they met the finish line. We increased their FaceTime opportunities through Zoom access for virtual office hours and then a lot of one-on-one -on -one individualized uh, troubleshooting, if, if you will. UNT received about $14.5 million um, through the CARES Act to distribute to our students through um, emergency grants and aid. To date, we've awarded over $12 million to students, uh, mostly from the CARES Act, but also from institutional funds and generous donations um, through advancement. We have assisted over 14,000 students. It's about keeping students enrolled helping them keep up with their lives, helping them persist towards their degree. Well, when COVID hit at first, I wasn't really worried, but then my dad lost his job, and then I started to worry about my job here at UNT, because I still had payments due, uh, probably like in the like next, next month, and then I heard about the CARES Act. I applied, and luckily I got some money to help pay for my dues so I can stay in school. Once the pandemic really kicked into high gear, the president formed the five advisory groups, and I'm the co-chair of the Safety and Incident Management One. We immediately had the group meeting twice a week. It was very clear that we needed to be ready and available to support the other advisory committees, as well as the institution as we work through um, the pandemic and making sure that the community is as safe as possible. We identified a need from the health system of GNT for developing ventilator splitters. This device is able to multiply the power of the ventilators so that more patients are able to receive the oxygen from the same ventilator at the same time. So uh, we came with this solution in 15 days with the aid of uh, one of our PhD students 
on the lab technician. I'm really proud of the work that's been done, not only by my team, but all the teams across campus to get to where we are today. Now we're in it and we are working through every day to make sure that we can keep our campus open, keep our students and faculty and staff safe. And I'm looking forward to continuing all that work so that we can make this as normal of a semester as possible and meet people's needs and expectations all while remaining safe and socially distant and doing all the things that we're supposed to do. So in order to meet the six foot social distancing guidelines for campus, um, we had to go out into approximately 400 different classrooms on campus, uh, field measure every single one of them. We've put up about um, 7,000 uh, do not perch stickers. We have moved approximately uh, four to 5,000 chairs. We have moved approximately 2,000 tables. Um, we've been in almost 400 classrooms on campus. Uh, we have, I think I calculated it, about 150 rolls of tape, which I wish I had the footage of what that, how many feet that was, because it's an, a massive amount. Now instead of uh, just going in, sweeping, cleaning the boards and doing the classrooms now, you have to disinfect on a nightly basis. I've been here 39 years. We go through the flu season every year. We went through H1N1, but this is completely different from anything that we've ever had to deal with. But I think as a team, we're prepared and willing to do whatever it takes in order to get the job done. The world's in a pandemic, but we, we don't do crisis food service. Uh, when you come in to eat in a dining hall or when you eat in retail, it's our jobs to make sure that Meal time is a happy time, and so that's what we aim to do. Uh, make sure that we are providing the best food possible. We have to. We had to adjust our, our service style, obviously, but at the end of the day, we're a service organization. We're trying to make the best out of it and make sure that the, the guests and the customers at UNT and uh, all the students, faculty, and staff are taken care of. I pretty much have always tried my best to help parents in detailed, I'm a very detailed person, um, with them not being able to come on campus and actually view the rooms themselves. I took it upon myself along with some of my other coworkers to make YouTube videos of the room so that they can get that experience of how it is to live in that hall and what exactly that hall is. daily staff meetings on Zoom just to keep everybody up to date on announcements. We started off with uh, the Mean Green Fridays, so everybody would still wear green on Fridays. Um, and then it kind of evolved into what kind of things can we do to, to make this a little more exciting, make it feel like you're in the office, uh, create a little excitement and energy with the staff. I think it's so, so important for us to connect, you know, no matter if we're in the office or you know working from home or, or whatever you know because that's that's who we were made to be relational people i think the important thing for me that i've taken away from this experience is whether you're talking to your coworkers or to students or to your family or friends everyone is just trying to do the best they can right now and some people have good days and bad days, but I think as long as we continue to be graceful with each other, that we will all get through this and hopefully we'll learn some valuable professional and life lessons and come out of this even better than we were before. So to be a UNT student, I'm not gonna say that the last six months was easy by any means. It was very difficult on top of COVID, like there was other trials and tribulations in my life that I had to deal with personally that took me like by surprise. To be a UNT student in a moment of COVID, it kind of makes me feel like I have strength to get through. And our new normal is going to require us as an institution and as people to really be nimble and continue coming together to think of how can we best help our students? How can we make UNT um, you know, continue to shine as, as the caring institution that we all know that it is? It's, it's definitely new, it's definitely unique, and I think we're up to the task. Once again, I thank all of you 
for pulling together to help our students be successful during this incredibly challenging time. So let's take a look at where we are now. Fall enrollment's up over 4%, and we have nearly 40,800 students, which is up about 1,500 students from last fall, where we also saw a record surge in enrollment. Our record-setting fall enrollment is due to better-than-expected international enrollment, a 20% increase in graduate enrollment, and the increased enrollment by our returning students, which indicates improving retention and faster graduation times. This is fantastic news. While enrollment's up, additional expenditures due to COVID and the continuing loss of auxiliary revenues, about a 5% cut in our state budget, all of those collectively will result in about a 30 to $50 million loss of revenues this year. Now we had to cover those through budget cuts, CARES funding, increased enrollment, and delays of several major building projects. CARES Act, along with GEAR and MSI funding, have been incredibly helpful to our students who are struggling financially. And by November, we will have distributed over $19 million in grants and aid to them. About 55% of our students are taking classes fully remote or online, while the remaining 45% have a mix of remote, online, and face-to-face -face classes. The face-to-face -face classes emphasize experiential learning, like labs in science and engineering, art and music classes, and classes for freshmen to help them get a strong start here at UNT. These classes are critical so that our students can graduate. We continue to limit large gatherings, except in Apogee Stadium, where the outdoor seating can accommodate about 25% of our normal capacity with masks and social distancing. Other fall sports have been postponed to spring. So far, it looks like most of our students are respecting our safety rules, and we continue to monitor residence halls and athletics and any places where we know there's an issue using our rapid testing machines that can test about 200 students and staff members in a day. In addition, we continue to use a statistically sound sampling method to detect COVID surges in residence halls and other high-risk areas. To date, we've seen a modest increase in the number of active cases on and off campus. Thankfully, the total number of active infections is far lower than we're seeing in many of our other Texas campuses. We've shown that our testing and tracing practices have been effective at limiting the spread of COVID, and I hope this trend continues into our spring semester. We have a mix of telecommuting and on-campus staffing as needed to serve our students, and we're going to continue to offer in-person and virtual services. It looks like telecommuting is here to stay, but we recognize the essential need to periodically be on campus together. While much of this is good news, there are some storm clouds on the horizon. We saw a decline in freshmen and transfer students who were hit hard economically by COVID. It's hard to know right now if this is part of a sea change in college going behavior or if this will reverse, but it's a fact that we need to attend to now by redesigning how we enroll and retain students. We also know the number of traditionally college qualified students is declining even here in North Texas. If we're going to be successful educating Texans and having a strong economy in years to come, we need to adapt to this new reality by de-emphasizing ACTs and SATs and by doubling down on student success initiatives that speak to our changing demographics as a minority serving institution. And by creating stronger pathways to employment with our alumni network and corporate partners who are actively trying to diversify their workforce. With an emphasis on strengthening our diverse culture and creating a more inclusive campus climate, a focus on student success and career preparation with the private sector, creating more access to advanced online and hybrid delivery, and growing access with affordability. We're well on our way to becoming a preeminent next generation university that will be a global leader in educational innovation. So as we look at what we've done, I hope that you can all see that these pieces of the puzzle are coming together. As we move our plans forward, we need to be sure that we continue to celebrate what it means to be a caring campus by addressing these questions. How will we perform our mission in the faces of the changes we see in the world? As we expand our first generation and minority serving institution status, how do we promote our students' success and their entry into the job market? Will we be able to offer better career development and awareness to meet the needs of private partners and the regional economy? 
How will we retain our students and give them a great experience? Can we strategically grow our international and graduate populations? How do we build a pipeline for black and Latinx scholars and researchers? Can we create a truly inclusive environment where students, faculty, and staff learn to work in diverse groups? How do we continue to move deeper into tier one? And will new technology help us better expand access and learning for our students wherever they are? How will our campus plans and facility needs change to help us achieve our goals? What does remote student recruiting look like and how do we diversify our faculty and staff to reflect our student demographics? This fall, I want to charge our campus leadership with addressing these challenging questions. And as we better understand the impacts and duration of COVID and the resources that we have available, we'll present our initiatives and strategic investments in January when I will deliver the State of the University Part 2 to give you an update on our progress, so stay tuned. If we can begin to address these questions and develop initiatives and processes to invest in that expand what we've started, this puzzle will come together and it will form the vision that guides us into the future. Thank you all so much for everything you do for our students and for each other. I believe the Mean Green family is stronger than ever and look forward to the year to come knowing that I get to serve one of the most caring communities I've ever seen.